Wow. Uh, in a teaching sense, it's okay to talk about fasting. Okay? Jesus said that when you fast, do it in secret, and your Father in heaven will reward you openly. That's a promise. And if there's something I could say right at the beginning is, is what you're hearing is super important right now. Okay? Every, you can say, oh, everything that's ever been said is important concerning the scriptures and Jesus, absolutely true. But right now for this hour and for, I think, the last couple of years, this is super important. So please listen to what Tim is saying. If you didn't get it or maybe you were tired from staying up too late last night, you can get the CD. It's very important. So as I was sitting there, I just started to weep because God started bringing me back to those times where there was no answer. And usually it was with one of my children that was suffering. And if any of you uh, that have children know what I'm talking about, you wish that you could step in their place because they're suffering. You're saying, God, why? What is going on? Because you want them to be free from that suffering. Or your loved one, your wife, your uh, husband, if, if you're a woman. And so he was just bringing me back to those times. He gave me a contrast that I want to share with you. And Tim, when Tim talked to me last night, we were talking basically about warfare. Well, now he comes and talks about submission. And that's a whole different subject. And it came perfectly clear to me as I was sitting there, because that is what it's about. And every single time that I could tell you of dozens of stories of fasting and prayer and watching God do something, it was always Him saying, I'm waiting for you to submit to me. Now, I, I can't even name a time that wasn't that way. And then when I practiced fasting and prayer, so that's what I want to contrast with you. When Jesus said this kind comes out only by fasting and prayer, he didn't mean, oh no, there's a battle, I better fast. That's not what he meant. Jesus lived a lifestyle of fasting and prayer. When he was with the woman at the well, and he, and he spoke to her, and remember he said, you have five husbands, the one you're with is not your husband. Sir, I perceive you're a prophet. The disciples came to him, and they said, Master, eat. It was clear, it's clear in the tense of the Greek that he had not eaten for some time. They were pleading with him, please eat. So he was a man of fasting and prayer. And he was ready. And when my little Maya died eight years ago in January, I had become sleepy, spiritually sleepy. And I vowed that day, never again. And I know a lot of things about that situation that I shared and had some people, you know, question what I was saying, but I can tell you I know exactly why that little one did not make it into this world. And God revealed that to me, and I vowed that day I will be ready. So I fast on a regular basis, and I'm not going to tell you how much. It's, it's between me and the Lord, but I want you to very, very carefully listen to what is being said today about submission to the Lord. Here's what James says, submit to God, Resist the devil, and he will flee. He is afraid of you when you submit to God. You are a bad warrior with armor and huge when you submit to God. When you become small and you say, my God is big, and you submit to him, he is afraid of you. My little boy, he's this big now. When he was a little boy, he would wake up in the middle of the night screaming in fear. And just screaming out in fear. And I would get up and go in there and I would, what's the matter? What's the matter? And it went on for weeks and, and it was getting really tiring and I was very selfish and becoming angry because I was getting up in the middle of the night and I had to work all day. And, and it was about me. And I really wasn't getting it. And so I knew about prayer and fasting as a new, fairly new believer. So I commenced to that three days. No food. I, I don't eat food. I drink water. 
That's all I have. I don't do fruit juices, none of that stuff. You do what you can do, okay? You start with a meal. If it's just a meal, just start somewhere, okay? But that's what I do. I do just water and lots of it. And so I went to that for three days. At the end of three days, I was on my knees in the living room pleading with God. By that time, I'd come to the place where I said, God, my little guy, he's suffering. That's where he wanted me to be. He's suffering. And the Lord spoke to me. And through the times that I was getting up with him in those two weeks, I would get upset. I was upset. And the Lord spoke and said, perfect love casts out fear. That's all he said. But when he says it, there's just something about that. First of all, I'm always amazed that he speaks to me. That just blows me away every time. Who are, who is man that thou art mindful of me? Why would you even care? But he does. So he said, perfect love casts out fear. I ran to the Bible. I knew where that was, 1 John. And all of a sudden, ah, oh, I see what's going on. He's teaching me that I need to put aside the selfish anger of getting sleep and minister to my son. So next night comes, fire engines were what the deal was. He would hear a fire engine wake up screaming in fear. And I grabbed him, I held him, and I was gritting my teeth, you see, because I really wanted to sleep still. But I said, I love you. It's okay, son. And he just kind of went back to sleep. Next night, screaming, wake up screaming. I went in there. I wasn't gritting my teeth. I love you, son. Daddy loves you. I'm right here. He went right back to sleep. And then I said, Loose him, Satan. Let him go. I rebuke fear in Jesus' name. Went back to bed, and I think it was three days later. He didn't wake up. Slept through the night. Now, the contrast to that, after little Maya's situation, and I said, I'm going to be ready. This kind comes out by prayer and fasting. That means it's a lifestyle of prayer and fasting. Okay? And I took up that lifestyle. I said, I'm all done having the devil walk into my house and whoop on me and my family. I'm going to be ready. So I commenced to that kind of prayer and fasting on a regular basis for the last eight years. And God has opened some really amazing doors. And I, again, I started to weep thinking about them. How God comes and delivers his people. It's just, it just blows me away every time. And so here I'm in this situation with a man at work i had uh he had been served papers by his wife he was totally blown away his wife had found some other guy and he was a wicked man wicked filthy mouth hard on his wife hard on his children i watched him dress down his 18 year old in front of all the guys in the shop and call him a worthly, worthless piece of blank 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 right in front of everyone and i watched that kid's countenance just fall so wicked man. And so when the sheriff came in and served him his papers in the shop in front of everyone, he fell on the floor completely, totally without strength, just shaking. I've never seen anybody reduced to nothing that fast. And he was shaking, just shaking. And his work partner and I are believers. He was not at the time. He called me and said, come in here. I went into the room. And I just put my hand on him, and I said, Lord, God, use this. Use this in some way, in Jesus' name. And I just walked away. And about two weeks later, he's going through all kinds of emotions, just totally blown away by this whole situation. Two weeks later, the workmate that was a believer comes rushing to me in the, my room, he says, get in here quick. There's something happening. And I came in, and this man was on the floor clutching his chest. He's, okay.